Hello YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. You know I just noticed these chairs back here? It looks like I have a waiting room going on in my workshop. I really don't. This is just my staging area and yeah, I just have decorations. So I wish I had a waiting room. That'd be kind of fun, right? Um, anyways, in today's tutorial, I've been wanting to do this tutorial for so long because I get so many questions regarding top coats especially top coats going over dark paint. So this dresser behind me, it was painted in a dark jet black. And if you've ever painted with black paint, it is so hard to not get a streaky finish with your top coats. So normally with water-based paints, so like chalk paints, latex paints, um, any of the paints that are on the, on the market when it comes to restoring furniture and painted furniture, usually you want to use a water-based top coat over a water-based paint. That's usually the rule of thumb. Now, is there some gray area in there? There sure is, just like with a lot of things, okay? Except pregnancy, right? You're either pregnant or you're not. There's really not a gray area there. But with top coats, there can be a little bit of a gray area. So the biggest complaint I hear from people is streaky finishes with their water-based top coats over a dark paint. When I say dark paint, I'm specifically talking about black paint, really dark navy and dark grays, okay? So not medium shades, I'm talking dark, okay? So what I'm going to do in this tutorial, I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment with different oil-based top coats over black paint, okay? I've made some sample boards, I've painted them black, and we are gonna test out a couple of my favorite oil-based top coats over these black painted sample boards. And we're gonna see, do they end up streaky? Do they end up smooth? And what's the secret to getting a flawless finish over a black painted piece of furniture? So let's get started, because I'm really excited for this one, okay? Let's go! Okay guys, we are on the other side of the workshop and I have my five sample boards here. I have given these sample boards, I think either at the very minimum, two coats. I've done the, I did these a while ago um, and it's, it's a chalk paint that I used um, and it's in a jet black color. So they've dried, they've been dried for weeks. So no problem there. I'm gonna show you the different products we are going to test out over these sample boards. I am gonna do one wax, cause I do wanna show you guys the difference between a wax board compared to an oil-based top coat board. So the wax I'll be using, and I love, love, love this company when it comes to waxes, um, Maison Blanche. Um, this is their espresso colored wax. If you do in fact want to use wax over dark painted pieces of furniture, I would skip clear wax. Clear wax is going to give you a cloudy look. I've tried it. I've tried it numerous times and it never works. So use a dark black or an espresso colored wax when it comes to doing it over a dark painted piece of furniture. You'll thank me for that because it won't be cloudy. So that's gonna be one of our choices. Um, the next one, I'm gonna do a polyurethane spray in a clear satin by Minwax. Um, we're gonna do another spray um, also by Minwax. This is a spar urethane. This is a clear semi-gloss. We're gonna try that as well. Um, another one, this is like one of my favorites. I use this all the time over my stained tops, um, general finishes, um, gel top coat. This is in a satin. We're gonna give that a go. And the last one is going to be by Minwax, a wipe on poly, and this is in a clear satin. So a couple things you should know in regards to sheens, okay? If you use a flat sheen, a matte sheen, um, you have an easier time of, um, I'll say disguising flaws in the painted surfaces. I think that's why a lot of people like to use wax. They like the textured look 
um, on um, antique pieces of furniture, and you can also kind of camouflage things better. The higher gloss you go, the more you're putting it out there of like, ooh, look at that drip mark. Ooh, look at those paint strokes, okay? So keep that in mind when you're choosing a sheen for your painted pieces. The higher gloss you go up, the higher the, the light's gonna reflect off of it and it's just gonna show your flaws more. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start with the wipe on poly. Um, I usually put this in a container. You're gonna see with these two products here, Boop, boop, doop, boop. Um, I'm going to use a two inch foam brush to apply them. And I also like to wrap a nylon booty around the foam brush. If you're like, what the heck are you talking about, Bethany? I did another YouTube video called the booty method. No, it's not an exercise and no, it's not an X rated thing. It is. Um, you take the nylon booty and you put it over the foam brush. And what it does is it, um, creates a smoother application of the top coat because what it's doing is basically if you have bubbles forming um, it kind of cuts down on those and it's worked really well for me and I've had a lot of success with it and so has so have many other people so if you're curious why while you're watching this like what the heck is she doing that's what I'm doing and if you want to check out a full video on that method I'll include that link below this video so you guys can just click on that um, so we're going to get started here, you guys. I'm really excited to see how these turn out. Okay, guys, you ready for our first sample board? I am ready to do this. So this is the Minwax Wipe on Poly. Now you may be asking or thinking, wait a second, we're always told not to put oil-based top coats over our painted pieces because we're told that the oil-based top coats will amber or maybe turn yellow. That is true. If you were taking this product or this product over a white painted piece of furniture or a light gray piece of furniture, yeah, it's going to amber the paint. It's going to make it look yellow, but this is dark paint. So that's why we can take that factor out of it. And that's why it's okay to use an oil-based top coat over a darker painted piece of furniture. Now we just have to see which one would work the best. So here we go. I put that Minwax Wipe on Poly in a little plastic container here. I got my booty, nylon booty over the two inch foam brush. And I'm just gonna go from one side to the other. Is it weird that I like the smell of oil-based top coats? Oh my gosh, that smells so good. So I've used the, this wipe on poly over my stain tops on a few of them. And what I like about this um, top coat, it's really foolproof. The only negative I have found with it, it's not as thick as my general finishes gel top coat. I have to do multiple coats with this. So probably with my general finishes gel top coat, um, I usually have to do three coats. So with this, with this product, normally I have to do like five to six to get up to this level. So, wow, that really dark. Do you see how much that darkened um, the paint? The paint really got jet black. So you, if you've noticed, if you've ever painted with black paint, when it dries, it kind of has like a charcoal gray color to it. And you're like, wait a second, I want really like jet black. When you wait to put on a top coat, that's when it kind of comes alive, which is really cool. Like you can see right here, what a difference between these two. Um, so we're going to let this dry and we're going to check in on this. So, so far using this product, not too shabby went on easily we're gonna see what the streaks look like how it dries because as you know with top coats sometimes it looks beautiful going on and then you come back to check on it a few hours later and you're like okay what sorcery happened between me putting it on and drying sometimes you can have a mess on your hands so let's hope it dries as nice as it looks right now let's go on to our next one 
their gel top coat. One of my favorite top coats. I use this all the time and I'm like down to the bottom of my can. So we're gonna start to apply this one. Again, I'm using a two inch foam brush with a nylon booty wrapped around it. This again, the paint's really coming through nicely, really darkening up to that jet, 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 jet black color that we like. Oop, I got a goober in my finish. So this happens sometimes when I get to the bottom of the can, which I am on my general finishes. You sometimes get what I call like the boogers. <laughs> it starts to like dry and clot up at the bottom. So I have one of those. No big deal. So I have to put that on my to-do list, go buy some more of this stuff. I should have stock in general finishes. Do you hear that general finishes? I should have stock in you guys, because I use them so much. So this is going on equally as nice as the Minwax Wipe on Poly. No issues with streaking that I can see. No issues with bubbles, anything like that. Looks nice, very easy. And we're gonna go on to the next one. Now these next two are sprays. So what you're gonna see me do is you're gonna see me kind of hop over here to the floor. I'm going to put these like on top of a brick and I'll spray them and then I'll bring them back up here. I just don't want the spray getting on the other boards. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to spray with the spar urethane next. I'm back here. Got the sample board on top of a brick and here we go. There we be. The only negative I can think if you spray a piece of furniture, if you have, if you painted it completely 100%, then I think a spray would work for you. I also think a spray is nice when it comes to chairs and spindles because who wants to paint on a top coat? Very time consuming. But if you're like me and do a lot of two-tone looks, you would have to separate out your painted areas from your stained areas, which can get a little tricky, but um, we'll see how this one looks after it dries. Um, I'm gonna go on to the next one and I'm gonna spray the Minwax polyurethane. Okay guys, here we go with the polyurethane. There's that one. Now, before everybody gets on my case, oh, you're not wearing a mask or whatever, I'm just spraying two sample boards, okay? Um, if I was spraying a piece of furniture, it's really important with oil-based products, you do need ample ventilation. So me being in an enclosed basement, not smart to be spraying large pieces of furniture when I don't have amp ample ventilation down here. Um, it's something to do in a garage or make sure you're wearing a mask and um, protective gear. That's the only thing with oil-based products in a spray that don't work for me necessarily is my workspace. Now, if I had a smaller piece, maybe like an end table, maybe I would do a spray or actually I would just take it outside to do it. That would probably be the smartest thing to do. Um, that's why I do a lot of painted on top coats because that just works for me in my work situation. So there's my little preaching moment with um, sprays and aerosols and oil base because they do have um, strong chemicals. So please wear protective gear and then good ventilation. Sample board. Um, this one is with the wax. Now you can see the espresso color. It's black. It's very dark. 
and I love, love, love this brand of wax. Um, I did a review on this wax not too long ago, so I'll also drop that video link under this video. So if you're curious about this wax, um, this line carries like every color of wax, clear. There's one called um, Vanilla Latte, which is kind of like a caramel color. Um, what else do they have? They have a liming wax, which is really nice. Um, I really like this wax. I have used it over my black painted pieces of furniture, and I find that the wax is not streaky. gives a nice, a nice luster, not too shiny, but just like just enough. And with this particular wax brand, I apply it with a chip brush. I don't do a rag. Um, I find it just goes a lot faster for me if I use a cheap chip brush and I just paint it on and then I wait um, about, I'm going to say about a half hour and then I will buff it off um, because it's really, it's really kind of, it's wet and it needs some time to dry. So that's how I do this one. And this is what it says on their instructions too with this particular wax brand. Um, other waxes I've used before, I've like immediately buffed off, not with this brand. So look how easy that is. That took no time at all. And we're gonna let that sit along with the other ones. We're gonna let them dry, you guys. And then we're gonna come back and take a peeky peek. And we're gonna see what's going on with the finish. See what we see, um, which ones we like and which ones were kind of like, ooh, that didn't really, work too well. So again, this is kind of experimenting and I like doing this because I'm giving you the truth when it comes to what products may work and which ones um, are when it comes to going, um, using oil-based top coats over black painted pieces of furniture. So we shall wait. I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye. Just to give you guys a comparison on dry time, right now the Wipe On Poly looks the wettest. All the other three oil-based top coats are still about halfway there to being dried. And then the wax, that's what the wax looks like not being buffed. I'm going to buff that in about 10 minutes. So this gives you an idea within about 15 minutes where we're at drying what they look like. Okay, you guys, I just finished applying the second coat of all the top coats to the sample boards, I wanted to get the best representation of these top coats. So normally on a piece of furniture, I don't apply just one coat, okay? I usually apply at least three um, when I'm doing top coats. So I wanted to give you guys the best representation because if I apply just one top coat, you're really not gonna see what these products can truly do. So I'm going to go my least favorite first okay so i usually love 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 the these guys but general finishes gel top coat <laughs> just didn't cut it um on top of this black paint i'm gonna hold up the sample board here it is streaky it looks uneven when the light hits it it's blotchy it just didn't do its thing i love general finishes on top of natural wood, on top of stain. It's all that I use, but over black paint, just didn't cut it. Um, the next one, the Minwax Poly, did okay. Um, I'm thinking, I only got two coats on this sample board. This product is really, really thin. Um, and normally, like I told you before, if I do three coats of a general finishes, I usually have to do six of this product because it is really thin. So I'm wondering maybe if I would put more coats, it would look better. Um, my, the thing that I don't like, it's, it's streaky again and kind of blotchy, but I think if I would apply more coats, it would maybe look better. So I'm on the fence with this one. So it looks okay. I think I could make it look better if I applied more coats. So there's that one. The two that surprised me were in the aerosol cans. I'm, I'm surprised these look as good as they do. Um, this one, the Spar Urethane, if you remember, is in a semi-gloss. So it's very glossy, but what impresses me the most with both these sprays 
is that I didn't get, you know, sometimes when you spray a top coat, you get kind of like, they sometimes will sputter out and kind of spit um, at times. Usually that happens when you're getting low um, in the can, but these did not do that and they gave such a nice, just such good coverage, like 100% covered the painted area, no blotchiness, no streaks. I mean, it looks, it looks very professional. So I'm, I'm really liking this sheen as well. This is a semi-gloss, so it's very, very glossy. And then this one, the spray polyurethane is in a clear satin. So it's less glossy than this. There's still just a little bit of sheen. This is nice. So people might like this. If you paint furniture, a lot of people with their black paint, they want like a flat or a matte finish. You guys, this might be the one. This one, if you can see, has a little bit of sheen, but not much. But there's absolutely 100% coverage on this. It's not blotchy, it's not streaky. This is a really good one, you guys. So if you're looking for a top coat, an oil-based one, and you want kind of like that matte flat finish, this one's pretty good. And I don't know in this spray can, this one here, if it comes in a matte or a flat. I just know I grabbed one and this is a clear satin and I'm surprised it looks as flat as it does but impressed with that one as well. I'm gonna hold these both up next to each other, you guys, so you can see the difference between a semi-gloss, hopefully I'm not going to drop it, a semi-gloss and the satin. Can you guys see the difference there? So there you go, that gives you an idea. And the last one that I did, if you guys remember, is the wax. I still like my wax. Um, I like how it looks. It gives off just enough sheen and not too much, not too little. It's easy to apply for me um, and it's fast. And there is the wax. So I love that wax that I use. It's called Maison Blanche. That one's in the espresso color. You guys, I'm gonna do a close up of each board just so you guys can really get a close up and you can see what I mean when I talk about the general finishes being blotchy and streaky and the different um, looks of the other ones as well. Overall, I think this experiment was successful. I got out of it what I was looking for. I'm impressed with these two. Um, I might work on this sample board some more just to see where I can get it because I'm just curious. Here is my best advice for you guys. If you are looking for an oil-based top coat over your painted furniture, please, I am begging you, don't experiment on your piece of furniture. So many people do this. Um, I get a lot of um, DMs with people going, oh my gosh, I think I ruined my piece of furniture. I spent so many hours on it and they experiment. They've never used a certain top coat. And they're like, you know what? I'm just going to try it. Why would you do that? Please, please, please get yourself some sample boards. And what I mean by sample boards is get some small pieces of wood. I get long pine planks and I cut them just because I have a miter saw. But if you don't have a saw, get some small pieces of wood and practice, experiment, paint it the same color that you've painted a piece of furniture and try a couple out. Try some different sheens out. See what you like. That is my best advice when it comes to top coats because I know it's so frustrating. I've made mistakes. I've screwed up pieces of furniture and I've just learned that it's worth the time. I know it's another step. I know you're buying maybe two or three cans or maybe two cans of a product, but it's well worth it in the end if you get the results that you're envisioning in which you're working towards instead of starting all over on a piece of furniture. So that's my best advice to people. Just practice, experiment a little bit. I'm trying to help cut through that phase for you experimenting by doing this here for you. So you can kind of see um, what worked here and what didn't. Um, if you guys found this video enjoyable, knowledgeable, informative, please give it a like. I truly appreciate when people do that. If you have any questions about this video, leave it in the comment section. I am um, happy to help answer any questions you may have. If you guys have any suggestions of what's worked for you 
um, with top coats over dark painted pieces. I'd love to know. Um, share what products have worked for you. And if you guys um, would like to subscribe to my channel, if you have not subscribed yet, please do that as well. There is a red button in the lower right hand corner. Just click on that. And then you should get notified um, every time I upload a new video. And <laughs> it's almost three in the morning here in New Hampshire. Um, and this is a lot. <clears throat> That's why I'm losing my voice a little bit here at the end. Um, I'm tired. Um, this is usually when my kids are in bed and I can do things like this. So pardon me if I'm getting long winded. I'm just a little tired. Um, again, just like and subscribe. Um, that button's in the lower right hand corner. And you know what, you guys, I will see you soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you later. Okay, you guys, here are the finished dried looks of my sample boards. Thank you for watching another tutorial by yours truly, and I will see you guys soon. Did you guys know I'm all over social media? That's right, you can find my Facebook business page at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. You could also find me over at Instagram, and that's at Bethany.Yousef. Go follow me there, you guys. Thanks for watching.